Hey, welcome back guys. My name is Brad. This is my basement machine shop. I wanted to give you uh, the first in a update series. Uh, I don't know really what I'm going to call this and how often I'll actually be able to have enough content to, to push out maybe a weekly basis. I, I don't know. <clears throat> but just wanted to give you a couple of updates, let you know some of the things that are going on here in the, the shop. After all, this channel is really to chronicle the um, the transformation of this place down here from a basement into a, a nice machine shop. So um, I guess I'll go back to Christmas time. Probably a couple of weeks before Christmas, I decided to get rid of all the woodworking tools, the machines and stuff like that that I had around the house and uh, clogging up my shop down here. Um, I sold everything, um, including a table saw. But being that I think, you know, everybody kind of needs a table saw around the house, right? Um, the, uh, the table saw was the last thing to go, so I had sold it and I would say within an hour or so I found another saw about 40 miles from the house um, and it's a, it's a 1939 Delta Unisaw and I went picked it up got it it's it's uh, <laughs> you know in my terms it's in real nice shape I mean other people would look and you know and be like yeesh but I could see through all the dust and the grime and stuff like that so <clears throat> I plan on uh, restoring that in the spring and in the summer because it's stripping of paint and repainting and all that and we're under <laughs> close to two feet of snow here in Pennsylvania um, yeah speaking of which it's it's about 54 degrees here down in the basement so uh, you know hence the hat and sweatshirt so what I had done was I sold all the machines I got everything um, out of here and I made a lot of room and it really gave me some ideas about moving things around and relocating stuff. Um, made room for the surface grinder. Um, yeah. Um, so, I, you know, I, I still got some cleanup to do. A little bit more. I, I need some more storage cabinets, some metal bins and things like that. Um, but slowly but surely, it's, it's coming around. I have a wall that's going to go in. A major wall that's going to go across the opening to the other part of the basement which will you know will make the it'll complete the look really um, I need to put a door in underneath uh, I have like store storage st <laughs> stair storage underneath the stairs I you know I have walls and you got that little section in there so a, a, a door's got to go in there <clears throat> um, but you know like anything, you, you got so many projects around the house and stuff, so it'll be a little while before the, the wall comes in. So I just wanted to uh, to say hello to everybody on the uh, the Machining YouTube Facebook page. Um, what, a, what a great place, man. I've met a lot of people and, um, you know, everybody shares what they're doing and, and uh, it's kind of like, you know, the in-between the videos. You get to see... Um, pictures of what everybody's working on during the week and you know there's some jokes flying and stuff like that it's it's real cool um, with that I made my own Facebook page because I was getting a lot of friend requests on my regular Facebook page and you know I there I like to keep some of the stuff separate you know from my personal life so I created my own uh, Facebook page the basement machine shop page and uh, I think I might have as many friends on there as I do with my regular one, if not more. Um, so that's a great place to go if you haven't heard about it. It's called Machining YouTube, it's, and it's on Facebook. I'll put the link up. Uh, let's see here. I, I have a little project going on. Uh, one of the things that came with the surface grinder was a demagnetizer. Um, big box, plop your piece on there, run it through for, I don't know, some kind of a some cycle and it will demagnetize your parts um, but it it too was just filled with grime and um, you know dirt and, and all that kind of stuff so I have that cleaning up I'll, I'll show some uh, some video of that and um, and some pictures and stuff 
And let's see, I have some new tools that I got. I got some mail that I want to show everybody. Um, none of it's none of it's user appreciation mail or nothing like that. It's just stuff that I ordered and uh, stuff that I got in. Um, pretty cool stuff. So, and I wanted to give a, a shout out to uh, to one of the guys on the Machine YouTube page. His name is uh, Stefan Gotswin Gotswinter. God, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. But uh, you know, the, I'll put the link right here. If you've not seen his channel, go to it and watch it. The guy is brilliant. I mean, he makes really cool stuff. Um, well, you know, well produced videos. Um, go check him out. You know, give him a sub, give him a like, send him some nice comments. Stefan Stefan Gotswinter. Hope I didn't butcher your name, Stefan. Um, all right. So, without further ado, let's check out some of the mail that I got and some of the the new tools. first piece of mail comes from, I think you guys all recognize what's in here, and the packaging. We have squares. And I don't know if the camera will pick up, but these are from Stan at Bar Z Industrial. Uh, Stan and I have become buds, and we talk, we talk every couple of days, actually. Um, He's been helping me out tremendously with surface grinding and uh, just giving me some tips and things to look out for. Um, but last month was my birthday, so Stan sent me a, uh, a vice, a toolmaker vice, as a birthday present. Look at that. So we put our piece in. The only thing that this is missing is the little yoke. Okay, so I have to make a yoke and I have to make the little hemispherical uh, washer here to get it and actually use it but this is a nice you know precision tool so I thank you very much for that Stan that was very nice of you <clears throat> he also sent me a little sample of none other than anchor lube I am now in the anchor lube club actually I'm, I'm two times in the anchor lube club because I went and filled out the little form to get your free sample and now I have two. So, got some anchor lube, got some squares to grind, and I have a uh, a vise now. So thanks a lot, Stan. I really appreciate it, and I appreciate all your help and uh, and the videos, uh, all with the surface grinder. They've they've been invaluable to say the least. <clears throat> Next thing that I got in the mail was not a notebook. It was something from Tactical Keychains, and it wasn't just a sticker. It was this pen. Now I saw this pen, or something like this, um, in one of Adam Booth's videos, and I immediately fell in love with it. And I sent Brad at Tactical Keychains an email, and placed my order. I forget what finish this is, but uh, you know, it's it's like a semi-polished uh, titanium. Workmanship is is fantastic. I mean, you got copper, you got titanium, screw-on cap and you can screw it on the back to post the pen. <clears throat> it writes really nice. I forget, if th this might be a Parker insert in here. Um, I forgot which one that he hooked me up with, but really cool. Nice pen for you to get your script on. Very, very nice pen. I like it. If, if there's one complaint I do have about this pen, Brad, it's a little small. I, I like a little bit of a longer pen. Just a little tiny bit. It, it, it almost feels like it wants to come through. I mean, I know it's not, but that would be my only thing, is just a, a tad bit longer. But other than that, I mean, the thing is just... The thing's really nice. So if you want a nice pen, and, and the funny thing is, is I was going to say, if you want a nice pen for the shop, but I don't keep this down in the shop. I keep this up up in the office where I use it every day. Um, go buy a pen from Brad. These are nice, you know. Give him some business. Um, he makes real nice stuff, and he's got some new knives coming out. I believe it's called the Vector. I hope I got that right, Brad, but um, I'll be picking up one of those, too. Anyway, 
go visit tacticalkeychains.com and pick yourself up some cool stuff. Here's our next piece of mail. I saw these cups first on Greg Halligan's uh, videos. A um, guy by the name of David Payne makes these. And I, I left a comment saying, oh, those are really cool. You know, where'd you get it? And put me in contact with, uh, with the guy who made that. And he did. And uh, David contacted me and asked me to send him a picture. And he made me this mug. And, man, it's super cool. I'm probably, you know, I'm probably not going to drink coffee out of it because I don't want it to go into the dishwasher and get scuffed up and everything. This is really nice. So I'm probably going to keep it as a memento. Either that or, I don't know, maybe I'll just be real careful and just hand wash it. But thanks again to uh, to David Payne who made this for me. It was very nice of you. Appreciate it, man. All right, the next thing we have is these safety glasses. These these are like cheater safety glasses. They're from the uh, the Pyramix company, and they're called the Emerge. Now, uh, Ray Cornelia, I have to thank you. You're responsible for me buying these. I, he was talking about these in one of his videos, and I literally pressed pause on his video and went and ordered a pair of these. They were... I think they were about eight dollars or something, but they're obviously cheaters. Um, if you have bad eyes, like I do, um, these are fantastic. The only thing that I disagree with you, Ray, is I, I think you would mention that you could see far through these, um, but I can't. Not at all. I mean, I I'm only good for about two or three feet with these, and that's about it. So these aren't my normal safety glasses. These are more of uh, you know when I'm when I'm doing stuff on the bench. Um, they're just, they're really good. They make everything big and bright and, you know, you feel like you got your eyes back again. So go get yourself a pair of, of uh, Pyramix Emerge glasses. I've gotten a lot of comments, believe it or not, about stones. What kind of stones do you use? Because I, you know, you use stones for everything. So they're just carborundum stones and they're widely available on eBay. I think I picked this up for geez five bucks six bucks or something I mean it looks brand new beautiful and uh, you get such a hone on your lathe bits with these and uh, I have a I have another one that I use a lot in the video it's it, it's more of a uh, rectangular one like a block but it was a long one and it snapped in half so now I have it and I use it like that for a myriad of different you know uses this is a bigger one you know and they get they get dirty you know you could clean them up but you know you could get these all day long on eBay for you know around ten bucks, five, ten bucks. All right. Finally got myself a little Spindexer. Um, I, I can thank Tom Lipton and Stan for this. Um, Tom especially because you know he did a he did a really cool video series where he he got more indexing options out of a out of a Spindexer and he made some mods to it and stuff and it came out really cool um, go check it out if you haven't seen it but it's really cool and uh, and I seen Stan using these on the surface grinder he was sharpening end mills and slitting saws and I mean you know these are these are invaluable and for the price that you could have them it, it's it's uh, it makes perfect sense to get one I'm gonna replace a couple of the parts on it there's some cheap parts on it I think I paid maybe 35 or 40 bucks for this one but really like these locking rings right here I'm gonna make new ones at a at a better metal and uh, you know this little thing here this is obviously the pin to do the to lock your index in and this is this is really just it's a soft metal it's designed to hold the uh, the quill here you know while you're turning it and locking the the collet down so I believe this hole here is for this to store it there I don't know that's where I put it though And we got this. This was actually a little, uh, this was a birthday present from the kids, from the basement machine shop kids. They got this for me at an antique store. A little Eagle Oiler. So I'm going to fill that up with some general purpose oil and use that around the shop. Last but not least, got myself a uh, an infrared thermometer. And I have uh, Randy Richard to thank for this one. I, I watched your videos, Randy, on the Chuck Keys that you made, and you went through the hardening process and the uh, and the tempering process, and you used a heat gun. And I've always wanted one of these, but that was really the the deciding factor because I want to do things like that too. So 
you know, you just uh, shoot the laser beam on it and you take temperatures. I, I've been playing with this thing all weekend. I mean, I'm, I wonder what the temperature of the television is. Hmm, I wonder what the temperature of the refrigerator is. I wonder what the temperature of my foot is. It's, uh, it's kind of fun and the kids, <laughs> the kids can't keep their hands off this thing. So uh, thank you, Randy, for that, for, uh, for the inspiration. And um, I'm actually going to do some heat treating stuff now that I see how easy it is. So that's it for the tools and the mail. All right, fellas, here's a, here's a little look at the, the progress of the shop here, what we've been doing. Now, we got the surface grinder in place. We got it re-leveled. Um, reshimmed, re-leveled. It's in its permanent spot now. There's a, there's going to be a wall going from there to that lolly column with a doorway right about there. So, you know, we got the surface grinder there. Going to have the VFD mounted kind of uh, behind it. The South Bend grinder, this, the uh, pedestal grinder is going to go right here. Um, we relocated the second roll away right over here and it came from in that corner and what I'm going to put in that corner now is the South Bend, South Bend drill press which was sitting right against that wall right there so I gave it a bear hug and I lifted it off and put it on the table there um, it's going to be fun trying to get it up onto that because that platform is a little bit higher but I did it before, I'll do it again. Eventually there's going to be a door right here. This is where the, um, the stairs are. So, still got some progress to make here before it really starts coming together and looking a lot better. Got the bandsaw right there in place. That's going to be its new home. It's on wheels so I can move it around when I need to. Um, and that's about it. I got another metal cabinet that I'm going to put, and I think I'm going to have it like go right against, you know, that way against the uh, the roll away and the air handler over there. <clears throat> it's a small, narrow cabinet with a door. Put like paints and chemicals and stuff like that in there. Um, what else? Yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna move that in place, and then uh, I'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like when it's all moved. All right, that wasn't too bad. We got the drill press in place now. I don't know how level it is. It doesn't look very level, but I'll have to uh, address that soon. Got to move the power over there. Now this bridge port takes up a lot of room, the way the table moves back and forth. So I think I could borrow a little bit of room there. So we'll see how that goes. But, you know, it's coming along. Got I got so much crap to get out of here and to throw out. Um... So that's the update around here. All the wood tools are gone. Lots of room being made. And for anybody who's wondering, under all this junk here is the South Bend pedestal grinder. It's in parts. <laughs> I'm just uh, procrastinating really. I just, I'm not in the mood to strip paint and and it's too cold anyway to repaint so there's really no rush. But that's, that's really what it comes down to, is I just got to strip the paint off of it um, and repaint it, you know, reshoot the paint. All the parts, <clears throat> all the parts are great on it. Except really for this guy right here. This is the, uh, it's like a drawer that comes out, but it holds water for quenching your, your things that you're grinding, tool bits and whatnot. So, soon, in the spring. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in for the first weekly update here. Hope to get these out on a weekly basis, but obviously, you know, I need the content to do that, and I need, I need to make progress down here. Time is so limited. Um, but if I can't get them out on a weekly basis, then bi-weekly or, you know, whenever I get enough content. But I think, uh, I think weekly or bi-weekly should be good enough. Um, got some good videos coming up, some lathe projects, some milling projects, and of course, surface grinder. So, uh, so stay tuned, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.